Hey guys, John here, and welcome back to the Synthmaster 3 tutorial course. Today we're looking at the sequencer. Now each layer gets its own sequencer, similar to how each layer gets its own layer effects. Now this is huge because it gives us the option to create really, really unique patches. Now the sequencer is located to the right of the effects here, so let's go ahead and click on sequencer. And to turn this on is going to be this button on the top left hand side, and when we play some notes we can see that the sequencer is working. So up here at the top where it says step, this is gonna tell us how many steps we're currently using. And right now we have eight, which is reflected right here where it says steps and the value is eight. Now, if we click this, we can go to a minimum of one or to a maximum of 32. Now let's say for example, we click on 32, we can now scroll to see our different steps in our sequence. So if we click this and go back to eight, let's take a look down here and this is gonna be our gate. So for example, we start playing a note. Unless we want these notes to be a little bit shorter, we can change this via the gate knob here. And we can double click this back to its default. And below that, we have something called note. Now, these are all going to be on the same note, which is why they show all C's. But for example, we can hover our mouse and we can scroll maybe to a C sharp here or scroll up here to a D sharp and see how that sounds. Now, what's really cool in SynthMaster is the record feature. So if we don't want to scroll and enter our notes that way, we can hit record and then we can start playing notes on our MIDI keyboard. Something like that. And then let's take it off record and then now let's play it. Now this is really cool in case you have a melody in your head or you're already playing on your keyboard. You can just hit record, play those notes. You don't have to worry about timing because it's going to do it per step. And then it's going to enter that into the sequencer, which is actually really cool. So now below the note, we have something called hold. So let's say for example, our gate is kind of maybe something like this here. And let's say for on some of these different notes, maybe this G or this A sharp, we wanted to extend the whole note for that. So for that, we can just hit hold on this guy and then hold on this guy and see what that sounds like. And maybe on this one too, we might want to do a hold, kind of get that vibe going here, something like this here. Yeah, and then we can click this here, we can undo these, or a very fancy thing, if we want to reset everything on one go, we can go up here to the gear icon, and then we can go to reset values, and then turn this back on, and we're back to default. So next up, we have something called trigger here at the bottom. Now let's say for example, this third note, we don't want this to be played, so we can turn this off. Maybe step six, we don't want that on as well. And let's take a listen. So it's gonna skip these notes. Now, what's also really cool is this can also act as probability. So if we put these back on here, we can click and then we can drag and it's gonna kind of fade out, but always look at this value here. So if we're at something maybe like 0.5, somewhere around here, this is gonna be a 50% probability. So you're gonna have a 50% chance that this note is gonna be triggered or it's not gonna be triggered. So these three times it still hasn't triggered yet. And then that time it does trigger. So depending on how you want it, you can go a little bit higher. You can maybe go 0.9 or something like that to have a 90% probability rate. And this is really cool because we can key in a sequence and change up all the probability. And it's going to run through the same sequence, but sometimes the notes are going to hit, sometimes they won't. And we add some delays on that. And it can be a really cool preset or a patch that we can build upon that. And another really cool thing to keep in mind is if we do like using the step record feature, we can turn this on and we can actually play chords. And if SynthMaster detects if it's a certain type of chord, we're gonna see it down over here. So we turn this back to on, let's turn our recording off. And then now we have a sequence of chords. Definitely cool. So next up, we have a knob called swing, and this will change the rhythmic groove of our sequence. So let's go ahead and key in something real quick. Let's press record and let's do something like this. And let's turn up record and maybe bring our steps back down to eight. We can always just scroll down like that. And so this is gonna be with no swing. And if we add it a little bit here, or a lot, Sometimes I find the value is somewhere around here, maybe 0.3 or so is kind of cool. Because adding just a little bit of swing can really make the sequence shine. 
If we ever want to change the speed of our sequence, we can do that under base time. Now, right now, mine's set to an eighth note, so one over eight. We can click this list here and we can pick whatever we want to, or we can just scroll, which I often do most of the time. So right now it sounds like this here. Or we can go to 16th notes. Or slow it down. And what's really cool here is we also have dotted notes and triplets as well. So from a fresh preset, let's talk about this velocity menu down over here. Now, by default, this is selected to step. Now, if we click this, we can change it to note, step plus note, or step multiplied by note. Now, first thing, let's turn on our sequencer. And we have some sequence notes. Now, if we bring down our frequency pretty low here, maybe add some resonance, something kind of like that. And then let's modulate this frequency knob. So let's go to the gear icon, add new ADSR envelope, and let's drag and drop this here. Now, if we looked at our modulation matrix, we can see that the source is ADSR envelope two, which is this guy, and the target, so what we're modulating is gonna be the layer one filter cutoff. Now, how do we want to do that? So we're gonna do this via velocity. So we can click this menu here, go to MIDI, and then we'll select velocity. So now we can go to these steps and we can say, how much of this incoming velocity do we want to have this modulation's depth be controlled? So let's say for this example, for this fourth step, let's bring this down pretty low and let's change the speed to something one over four, a little bit slower. Do you notice how here the velocity is much lower? We can click and drag these, which is gonna be our velocity, our volume amount. And if we bring this really low, the modulation is also gonna be really low. And we can maybe alternate something kind of like this here, every other one, so we can kind of see a little bit better. And we can also control this with the volume as well. Even if we put these all back to the top, something kind of like this here, and then dial it in with this volume control. Now the next version is going to be this note here. Now this deals with incoming MIDI velocity. So if we have our piano roll here, I have a C and the velocity here is all the way at the top. So once we start playing some notes, it's gonna be modulated all the way up here at the top. However, if we select this note and bring down our velocity pretty low, maybe 50-ish or so percent, then also the filter modulations around there as well. We can bring this down all the way or close to all the way somewhere around here and we won't really have much modulation. And again, let's maybe go to somewhere like 50%, something like this here. And again, all the way here to the top. So that's essentially these two different modes. Now, the other two is basically going to be adding this step plus the note, combining those two values, or we can multiply both of them. So it's really up to you which one you want to choose from. So from a fresh preset, let's talk about the sequencer's expanded view. So if we select on sequencer, let's turn this on for now. And then to enlarge the screen, let's click on this magnifying glass. Now here on the left-hand side, we can see our piano roll. And then here at the top, we can see our steps. Now, if we click and drag, we can move this up and down, something like that here. Now we only have eight steps, but let's say for example, we go to our steps and add something like 32. Now we can click and drag this bar here and kind of go through all of them. However, if we want to see everything at once, we can hold down control and shift on windows and then scroll out or scroll in depending on how much of these steps we want to see. Now on the piano roll, we can hold down control and we can scroll with our mouse wheel to expand or contract this view. So it really depends on how you want to view things like this. Now the same thing works too as well. If you want to scroll here on the velocity, we also have access to hold here as well. And we have the same functionality of the trigger. Now, another cool thing as well, let's say we have some notes kind of like this here, maybe remove some of these, we can click and add notes, click and remove notes, things like that. But let's say, for example, we just want to transpose this note. All we have to do is hover and then we can scroll, which is a really fast way to change notes. And if you want everything to be transposed like this, all we have to do is hold down control and then scroll with our mouse wheel so we can transpose an entire sequence with just two buttons or one button in the scroll. It's pretty quick. Now, another thing we might want to do is to increase the steps length. So for example, let's turn on our sequencer and let's change some of these notes. And again, we're using the scroll wheel here and we're going to come back down something like this. So we have this sequence. Now, let's say, for example, we want this first step to be the length of two steps, right? So all we have to do is bring our mouse down over here, and then we click and we drag to the right. And we can see here how it says one, one, which is the same step, and it's the length of two steps. So we can take a listen to that. We can do the same thing here with five. Let's grab this and bring this over to the right like that. Now 
Now, keep in mind, when we start increasing this length here, we should always pay attention to the gate as well. So we can increase this something like that, or we can do maybe something like a hold that can also be another idea like that. You can do maybe shorter like that and maybe put this one on hold and maybe this one on hold. Now here in SynthMaster, we can have these steps to a maximum length of eight. So for example, here on this first one, we just have two, so we can click and we can drag this all the way to the right here. And then again, we can scroll out. So this is gonna be the maximum. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can also make these smaller. So for example, we can click this here and we can bring this all the way to the left like this. And as we start bringing it more to the left, we can see this line start to appear. So this is going to be two notes in that space. Or we can go three. Or we can always go to a maximum of four and we can bring down the gate just a little bit, maybe take this off hold, something kind of like that. Down on the bottom right, we have volume, gate, swing, and strum. Now, each one of these parameters can be individually randomized. So, for example, we can randomize the gate. Let's first turn on our sequence, and it would sound like this. Now, if we want to randomize this gate length, we can just select gate, go down to random, and then increase this dial. And now with no randomness and full randomness, and we can even slow it down a little bit as well. And we can see here on the spectrum view how different or how random all these gate links are versus when this is all the way down. And once again, all the way to the top. Definitely pretty cool. So next up, we have a really cool feature called scale lock. So let's say we have a lot of different notes in our sequencer and we want those notes only to be limited to a certain scale that we choose from, and it would change the notes that aren't in that scale to the scale that we choose. So to do that, let's go here in the sequencer. Let's turn this on. And for this example, let's do a major scale here. So let's slide these all up like this here. And we have one last one to go. So we have this scale here. Right now, let's make this a little bit slower so it's a little bit easier to hear. So we're gonna go one over four. Now we have a C major scale going on here. Now let's say we want to make this a C minor scale, but we already put our notes in here. So what we can do is go down here on the bottom, let's go to global and then C, and then right now it's on major, let's go down here to minor, and we're gonna turn on scale lock. Now notice this note right here is gonna change. So without scale lock, we're still doing the C major. Now with the scale lock on, off, on. So this is a really cool feature because if we get on here to this menu, we have a lot of scales to choose from. So definitely spend some time in here if you wanna go through some of these really cool scales. Now on the bottom right of the sequencer, we have something called receive note. Now, whatever note we set this to, MIDI input is limited to this note only for this layer, which can be really useful for drum parts. And to the right of that, we have something called play note. Now here, whatever note that we set this to, it's gonna only play that note. So regardless of whatever notes we actually play, it's only going to play that note. So for example, we went on play and we said maybe octave four and went a C four, no matter what notes that we play here, it's only going to be a C4. So now let's turn our focus to a preset that shows some drum sequencing. And for that, we're gonna load up a drum preset. So if we go to our browser, I've already marked this as my favorite, but this is gonna be Drum Acoustic Kit 1. So if we click this guy here, we have this loaded up, and if we play a note, we hear a drum beat. If we play a different note, we hear a different drum beat. So let's take a look and see how this is starting to work. So in our sequencer, let's go to the expanded view. And right now we're gonna be on pattern one. So if we play a note here, we have this here, and we can always go to the right. We have another pattern, another pattern, another pattern. 
and so on and so forth. So here we can start to make our own patterns if we'd like to. We can set the low key and the high key. So whatever's going to trigger that, we can set the name if we want to as well. And under this gear icon here, we can create a new pattern. We can duplicate a pattern that we've already worked on and we want to make some small little changes to it. That's very helpful as well. We can delete it. We can clear the pattern if we want to start fresh, copy it, save pattern. You can load different patterns. So there's a lot of stuff you can do in the sequencer. It's not only meant just to sequence notes, but you can use it as a full on drum sequencer if that's something that you want to do. As always, I highly recommend to spend some time with a sequencer. It can do quite a lot and there's nothing better than actually getting your hands on it and working with it. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.